<laughs> a shout out to the boy K motherfucking Dizzle, K Dot, yeah. the god who apparently is making a movie with the South Park creators. Yeah, out of all the fucking oddball things, dude. Yeah, and it's going to be a thing that's going to be produced for Paramount Plus. So, God damn it, man. They know how to fucking get you right by the asshole. New that's IP, bro. Them. New IP. Because think about it, You get, again, the, the Matt, Matt Stone, Trey Park, who honestly, they don't even want to fuck around. With, I mean, obviously, they still do South Park. And 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 they branched out to movies before that were super, like, you know, low-key low gems. But again, they have that kind of power. You know, they're going to be writing and producing something, and then, and then you, <laughs> uh, and then, <laughs> and then you get one of the most prophetic rappers in the game. So now you got the black community up in there. If you didn't already get them from the Stoner community, that fucking came from the Shane Parker shit, bro. Like it's a yeah. way to pull Paramount Plus. Matter of fact, on a side note, the even I don't know if you ever fucked with the video game Halo. It's on the Xbox. It's on PC it. now yeah. too. If you want to play the multiplayer, anyways, they they have a fucking show coming out, and it's on Paramount Plus. God damn it. And it's in that money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I, I was hating at first because I was like, they had um Paramount oh is owned by Viacom where they're merged together. So you got the MTVs, you got the you know, the VH ones, you got the Nickelodeons, you got all that shit under one powerhouse. So like they had Paw Patrol, for example. I think that's a Nickelodeon joint, again, owned by Viacom. So they have all these really chits that are like, hey, you got you got some kids, you're gonna need this shit. You you know, you in this demographic, you're gonna need this shit. And apparently it's about, is it about oh, white plantation the, owners? Is well, it, I got the description up. So it says the film would depict the past and present coming to a head when a young black man who was in, interning as a slave reenactor at a yes. living history museum discovers that his white girlfriend's ancestors once owned his. Holy hot damn. That's a, that's a lot to unpack. So, and I'll say this because it's Kendrick Lamar, I'm definitely going to check it out. I, I, I don't have a opinion either way on South park and their creators. Like I know they've done a whole bunch of stuff and I don't, I don't rock or I, I don't, I can't say that I've, watched a whole bunch of their stuff and i'm somebody who i used to like south park in the very beginning before it like blew blew up like those first like few seasons i was a big fan of south park and then after a while it just it got a little too far even though i do still like some of the jokes pop up i'm like that's oh and actually one of the jokes that i had been cracking all week long is you know things have been happening i'm like not only am i positive COVID-19 positive. So that's been one of the things I've been flipping the HIV positive Cartman joke. But I say all that to say that the Kendrick Lamar part is what's bringing me to like, okay, I'm gonna check this out because I am someone who as an African American, I am so sick of stuff based around slavery. You know, Django was the last slave movie I ever wanted to see. We finally got, you know, some Negroes fighting back, even though again, I still think it was Quentin Tarantino doing like, oh my God, you guys get upset that I say nigger in every single show movie that i put out let me yeah, make a slave this. movie so i can hit you with 192 of those like i still think that was what he was up to but no he really, he really not, likes to say it too and uh, samuel L. jackson does. makes him feel real safe he likes i that know guy. he does i want to punch that man in his face so bad but i can't because he would sue me but i do want to check this out because it does seem like it's going to be interesting oh and actually it says that to do, do they're saying it's see oh so it's a doozy of a plot seems in line with the recent hollywood trend of addressing racial issues through genre films like get out at first glance it seems most closely resembles 2020's antebellum a horror movie starring janelle monet that also mm -hmm. focused on the trauma of slavery and historical reenactments but the fact that it's a comedy means it may be more in the vein of 2018 sorry to bother you which used dark absurdist mm -hmm. humor to satirize gentrification and racism in the workplace so one, all that one, sounds good. One thing that's for sure, with Kendrick being a part of it, you know that he's going to bring some integrity into it. So as yes. far as the references the to the black community, to the slavery, he's not going to coon it up for the sake of money. Exactly. And that's one thing that we can trust that he I've puts behind the shit. It, for sure. And then when it comes to Matt and Trey Parker, although, again, they're known for uh, South Park and it being kind of satirical about the entire fucking world, things like the Book of Mormon, bro. Not only was that uh, a parody of, again, what we see the Mormon religion in, that motherfucker became a goddamn musical. And, like, it's one, I don't know if it's Tony Awards or what fucking awards that musicals win, but they've won that shit. 
And yeah. it's one of those things that continue and that it's a fucking I don't know what it is or whose dick you gotta suck in order to get into the into the into the theater game for like mm. Broadway musicals, but that shit goes hard and it has its own prestige. And yeah. again, the fact that they cracked their way into it, whether it was white or whatever, it's a big deal. So yeah. we know that they have musical chops from writing lyrics to all this shit. I mean, pretty much every song could be a rap song, depending on how quickly you fucking say it, right? So yeah, I yeah. can just imagine, too, like, there has to be some musical incorporations. That shit has yeah. me excited. I mean, shit, we've been waiting for fucking Kendrick Allen for for at least five years because my oh, son wow, no. was barely born when uh, when Damn came out. So, like, literally. That's funny, it's, yeah. It's that's supposed to be funny. five years. Yep, that's crazy. And, so I'm just uh, and people were or were kind of going off online saying, oh well, are we gonna get you know any kind of music coming soon? And if anything, if anything, because it takes a takes a while to produce this shit, you know what I'm saying? If they're lucky, if they already have the material, you know, shooting can happen in about a month or three. But like to put that shit together is a whole other thing. So, but what most people want to do, especially artists that are you know connected with other multimedia shit, which is why I think he left. And I'll say Death Row. The reason why he left Top Dog to do this LRG or OLRG or whatever the little new label thing that he's doing. P P R Lang or something like that. Yeah. P G Lang. P G Lang. P G Lang. I don't know. It reminded me of L L R G. That was one of the dopest. I remember the the hip hop apparel. Oh um, yeah. Um, what was I gonna say? And he he did it with his boy Dave, who, if I recall correctly, and I'm not a biographer, but I think that was a Christian dude who kind of put him on the game. So like, I'm glad to see that he's taking the one of the close homies and you know starting yeah. something of his own. But I I say all that to say that. There has to be a way, the reason that he's kind of connecting all this shit. And I'm hoping if this halftime yeah. show happens, when the foosball game happens, the Super Bowls, I'm hoping that we get to hear something new. Maybe, right? You figure that's kind of when you play the classics, but you never know if that might be when you drop a new single or something fresh happens. Yeah. And then, or even if he doesn't perform something new, if just the week of he drops a new album because all the attention is on him because he was just on the Super Bowl. Yeah. All the ears, all the eyes. So then again, then you get a music project that hopefully comes out and of course it's going to be something that's going to stick to the ribs it's going to last a while and then bam you come out with something that's that's to the subscription service so it makes sense because these things come in droves unfortunately yeah. just how the deaths come in droves so yeah. do people's releases when like back in the day every fucking movie would have a video game ad adaptation and then there's a book adaptation for the motherfuckers that don't yeah. even want to watch the goddamn thing would rather read about it and yeah. that's how you do things man so i'll make that it just pumps <clears> enough <throat> to think that there's going to be some some new something and I, yeah. and I yeah. think the more that we can, and I don't even I don't even want to say satirize, but the more that we can bring light to something, and obviously, what's the best way to kind of ingest something is usually with humor, right? You want to hide the medicine with the with the snacks or whatever, however the candy, however that saying go. So yeah. I'm really hoping that with something like this, I think can open up a lot of eyes. And even though the, you wouldn't imagine for shit to be prophetic, bro, like Seth uh, McFarland, he has a. Uh -huh. uh, and I talked about this before, but there's a, a cartoon compilation that he did. It's called Sat Seth McFarlane's Cartoon Cabernet of something. And it was like yeah. volume one or something. I don't know if they ever did more volumes to it. But it was pretty much family guy-like animation. But with just they're just little skits. And brother, when I seen this shit for the first time, like I'm not even kidding when I felt like I heard God. Like it wasn't like I heard like a God's voice, but like I felt like the shit that he was doing was like some real spiritual shit that people weren't yeah. ready for. They laugh at the dick and fart jokes. They don't realize it's something a whole lot deeper. And that's yeah. what I'm really hoping that comes from this. Like, I'm going to, yeah. you know, we're going to drop some end bombs in this <laughs> motherfucker, but I hope that you can ingest that it's with fucking yeah. purpose and cause. <clears throat> and, some cool and, and I'm excited because I, so I know that Kendrick is stepping away from music, which I have been saying for quite some time. I was like, Kendrick drops one more classic album. He needs to walk away and never do music again because we have never seen someone drop consecutive classics the way that he did. There's yeah. no need to tarnish that hip hop legacy. Go do something else. And so it's good to see that he's already working on his next thing to do. And then furthermore, I have been wanting to see, and again, this is from the Black Experience, I I want to see more black filmmakers out there to get these uh, these different takes forever and that's the reason why again something like get out by jordan pill was groundbreaking and like a uh, important moment for us in the black community because it was like you know there's all these horror movies that you know as black people go and watch these white horror films and it was the first time where we had a black horror film 
of a black man with a white woman with white liberal parents and oh my god those motherfuckers are trying to kill you and to some people it sound absurd of like oh my god that's just some everyday like and it's like no that's like that's fears that black people go through it's certain things that the other people have not ever experienced or ever crossed their mind. And so it was great to see a director be able to bring that to light. And us, you know, I thought us was good. A lot of people didn't really like us. Yeah, I get it. Bro, the fucking um, the remix of Five on it, bro, is fucking haunting, dog. Yeah. <laughs>